Hello everyone, this is Sean again, and today we're going to go over um, how to spec out a server uh, for your capstone project. Um, Pat has given you specifications for two different servers, two different kinds of servers, the domain controller and the file server. And what I'm going to do is walk you through um, how I went to spec out the domain controller. Um, I did not use these links because they don't take you quite where you need to go. They give you an idea of what the server is, but what you really want to do is go in and pick one of the, um, one of the models of these servers and then um, add your own customization to it. So uh, if you were to Google HP small and medium business, you'll come up with a very interesting um, link name to get you to the small business store. Um, the small business store has everything for small businesses, but we're going to focus just on the server. So if we go down to server, select the server, then what he's asking for is a ProLiant which is what they are, DL360E Gen 8. That's what we're looking for. So for the server, and then we want the ProLiant 300 series. That's here. And then what we wanted was the 360E, which is right here. So let's select the 360E. And this gives us uh, the four different models of 360Es that they have. Um, so, going back to the specifications Pat gave us, we need dual power supply, we need small form factor drives, that's what SFF means, um, it needs to support Windows Server 2012, all of HP's modern servers will support 2012, um, mirrored 300 gig SAS drives, 8 gig of RAM, and a single processor, So, and slowest is fine. So, if we go here, um, the first one, first option here is 8 gigabytes of RAM, um, it has two times 460 watt power supply, so a dual power supply, small form factor um, hard drives, so and a single quad core processor. So this is the one we're going to choose, the cheaper one here. So if we click Buy Online, that brings us to an area where we can go through and customize it more for what we're looking for. So um, as you can see, the way it's spec'd out initially, the price is about $2,800. This is going to go up by about 1000 by the time we're done, and you'll see where we add that um, as we go. So just um, it's very important when you're specking out a server, make sure you read every single one because things will get um, snuck in there that you don't know about or you're not aware about and you won't find it out about it until after it's already shipped and gotten to you. You open up the box and this is not what you were expecting. So make sure you, um, you just do a quick check through each one of these things to make sure it's what you were expecting to see. So um, it's got a single quad core processor Yep, it's got 8 gig of RAM, PC3L, this is um, low wattage memory, it takes less power, and it's important for servers because servers are always on, and so any anytime you can reduce the amount of power draw in a server, you're going to save your annual electricity bill, and that's eventually going to save your money in the long run. Um, operating system we're not going to install. Um, I don't know if Pat was specific about that, but you don't need to um, install it. If you were to purchase it from them, you could either get single or five-pack licenses for different of different kinds. Um, because this is a small business, it makes more sense to have user CALs rather than device CALs. The main difference is that um, a user CAL is per user, so you can be on any machine and you have a license for that one person. A device CAL means that device has a machine. Small businesses almost always have more machines or devices than they have people. If you can imagine, you've got um, a couple of machines out in the warehouse that need to get connected uh, to the server for some reason, then everyone's got one at their desk, and then um, maybe there's someone with an iPod or a laptop that's an extra machine. So very often, there are less users, and so it's cheaper to do a user cal. If you have a big business, especially if you start having like um, businesses that run two or three shifts, you almost always have more people than you have devices, and so then a device cal would make more sense. But in any case, we're not going to add one for ourselves. Um, the storage controller, this is the RAID controller that we're going to be using. Um, this particular one will have SATA or SAS drives available to it, so that's good. Uh, drive cage <laughs> is very important because there's very often, um, if you buy a bare-bones server kit, um, it's going to come with a very large area, an empty space, where you put the cage that you put the drives in. If you don't buy the cage, you've just got a big, big empty space where the drive is supposed to go, but no, nowhere to screw in the drive. So make sure you have a cage. Riser card, this is actually what allows us to plug in the PCI Express cards um, that we're going to need, uh, specifically in this case for a network card. Um, otherwise, you just have a big empty socket on the motherboard uh, where this riser card is supposed to go. So make sure you actually have the ability to plug in PCI cards, um, not just that it's, it's compatible with them. Licenses. 
the SAS license is important. <laughs> Without the SAS license, your um, RAID controller here is not legally licensed to use SAS drives. Now these controllers, like I said before, can run SATA or SAS. SAS are generally higher performance, and so you use them when you need more performance for a faster machine. Um, but they also make you pay $99 a year to have the license to be able to use the um, SAS drives on your controller. So just something to keep in mind, that you need to read the fine print on a lot of these to make sure that you have all the licenses that you're supposed to have for the hardware. So power supply, you get two power supplies. And if you're ever going to run two power supplies, you have to make sure they're exactly the same. This is really important because that's what keeps everything flowing in the same um, vo voltage and wattage. And there's no ver variation on that. Um, you could very easily get things either out of sync or even possibly um, frying them by having the wrong wattage or different wattage uh, running in at the same time. Rail kits uh, are important because if you are putting your server into a rack, um, there are two ways to do it. You use a rail kit where you uh, attach rails onto the sides of your server and then it slides and locks in place with some pre-configured um, rail kits on the, on the rack. Or you screw the uh, server directly into the rack. Most racks don't even support that anymore because servers are so heavy that if you tried to screw it into the rack on the front, you would have to have a whole tray underneath to hold it up or it would just simply bend the whole rack when, it, when you let it go. So um, they don't all come with rail kits. Uh, there have been many, many times where we've ordered servers and the rail kits did not come with the server. And then we had to go scramble and find um, more kits to, to install these things. So keep that in mind, that if you're expecting out a server and you know you're going to be putting it in a rack, that it comes with a rail kit that, you can, that is also compatible with the rack that you're putting it in. We're not dealing with the rack in this installation, so you don't have to worry about it. ILO is um, basically management software that HP um, provides, hardware and software, um, for things like remote access, remote um, control, and um, monitoring of hardware. Again, we don't need to worry about it. They almost always come with that. They also almost always come with three-year warranties, which are very important for businesses. Um, these warranties are pretty comp comprehensive. They're also pretty expensive. But we're going to leave them as is. So now for the extra stuff that they didn't give us yet. We don't need a second processor. We don't need extra memory. That Those are both within our specs. Uh, we do need 300, let's back here, uh, 300 gigabyte SAS drives mirrored. So we need two of them. So here we go down for SAS, 300 gig. There's two of them. There's 10K and 15K. Um, there's also $150 difference between the two of them. So unless you have a good reason to need the 15K speed, um, stick with the 10K. 10K is still a pretty fast hard drive. It's not as fast as solid state, obviously, but it's fast. It's faster than your desktop computers. And um, at 15K, you're going to notice a speed bump. It's not going to be a 33% speed bump like it looks like it would be here. It's actually it's not that great um, of a jump. It is a jump, and you'd notice it, but not that much. So we'll just go with the cheaper drive. And multimedia drive. So they no longer ship servers with a DVD or a CD drive. That used to be standard because you had to have some way to install the operating system. Nowadays you don't need um, optical drives necessarily to install the operating system. They still are however very nice to have and very convenient because there's almost always a time that you're gonna have to install something from some vendor and they're gonna give you a DVD. It's That time is going away but as of right now we still need them. So let's add just the DVD ROM drive. We don't need to burn drive, burn disks on our server. PCI Express card, this is where we're going to look for our Ethernet card. Um, now, we want to have at least two ports on our Ethernet card. We want two network interfaces because, um, e if nothing else, for redundancy and backup, if we team them together, um, we can set one as the active one and one as basically a hot swap spare. So if something happens with the first um, interface, it'll just jump over to the second one and be fine. Um, on domain controllers, it's often very useful to have even more. Um, a lot of times I will have a four port uh, network um, card because there are many different um, services that will be running on a server, especially in a small business. And you might want, say, DHCP and DNS to be on one separate um, in interface all by itself because it will be constantly serving DNS requests while people are online. Um, and then have one set just for Active Directory authentication or basically Active Directory um, uh, stuff and then maybe one for files if there's any kind of share on the server. But in our case, we're going to go as simple as possible and just go with the two port. But it is important to know that um, the one gigabit per second 
uh, internet connection or network connection is often the slowest part of what the server is doing. And so if you're going to be using an awful lot of network traffic, you will want more network interfaces um, to help speed up the process. Um, a one word about the cable option kits. They don't always, like cables that um, are specific to a certain hard piece of hardware. So in this case, we have this piece of hardware. We have the, um, the B320i RAID controller, right? There's no guarantee that you have compatible cables to go with that card. Sometimes they're standard, sometimes they're not. Um, it's very important to know what cables you need. Um, for 80 bucks, it's probably going to be a lot easier to just make sure that the right cables are going to be included with it when it ships so you don't have to hope that you've got the right kits, the right cables. Excuse me. Um, we've had that happen a number of times where we buy a server and then we look inside and there's some proprietary jack um, to go on one of the cards or one of the riser cards that we don't have and you can't buy. You have to buy from like HP or Dell or something and then you have to wait another week for them to ship it to you or something like that. So just keep, keep that in mind when you're first buying it um, to, to factor that in. Power cords. It came with a power supply. It does not come with a power cord unless you ask it to. Because th these are generally the standard black three-prong power supply power cords that you um, would see everywhere else. But uh, you need to make sure you have them. And also, remember, we have two power supplies. So we're going to need to make sure we have two power cords, which when we get to the checkout screen, we'll make sure we have both two power cords and two hard drives. Because right now, we just have one each. So the rest of this is stuff that we're not really going to worry about. Um, SAS, if we had additional um, SAS cards, we would need to buy other ex additional licenses for them, but we only have one, so we're okay. Um, installation service, we're going to uncheck. This means HP is going to send someone out to, to basically hook up your computer for you. You are the uh, domain administrator, so you're the one that's going to be hooking it up. Uh, and that's it. So now that we've checked all the things that we want, let's add it to the cart and then make sure that it, it has all the pieces that we need. So here is a list of all the stuff that comes with the server stock, the 8 gig of RAM, the um, RAID array um, controller, the cage, the license for the SAS um, array, the two power supplies, the rail kit, and then the um, warranty and, and ILO stuff. So down here, right now it's set to one drive. We're going to update that to two. And then down here, power cord only has one, so we're going to update that to two. And then update everything. Make sure we've got our two. We've got the DVD drive. We've got the two-port Ethernet card. We've got the cables to go along with our SAS um, controller. And <laughs> this is the cost of the warranty. It's expensive, uh, like I was saying before. But it, well worth it. Anything goes wrong with that server, they're either going to come out and repair it or they're going to come out and replace it. So it's worth it for three years of peace in mind. So as you can see, the total wasn't that much more than what we had. It's 3486 for the for the entire um, server. So that's it. Um, that is a very brief and fast <laughs> introduction to how how we'd go about specking out servers.